All right. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to be talking about all the tools that you need to get into bait making, making wooden lures. These are. This is going to be a part one video. There might be multiple parts, more than two. Uh, telling you how to, what you need to make the lure, what you, how to make, how to do it, all the techniques, and how you do every single little step. Um, and we will do this with many, a lot of different kinds of lures. We'll do this with hard baits, we'll do this with soft baits, we'll do this with spinners, everything that I know how to do. But today, we're focusing on what you need to buy, or just find, uh, in order to start making lures. So, the first thing you're going to need might seem a little obvious, but you're going to need wood. Um, I don't recommend buying balsa wood or tupelo wood or basswood or any of those fancy wood carving woods when you first start. Just go to the store, buy a 2x4, uh, probably pine would be your best bet. It's just not super hard to carve. Uh, you know, when you have balsa, where's my balsa? It's super light compared to this. This feels like a rock. Uh, but this is very mushy when you carve it and you can put dents in it really easily and it can be really frustrating if you're not uh, used to carving wood. So just go get yourself a pine 2x4. You know, I'm really long, really short. I'd get a long one so then you have a lot of wood to use. Uh, you can also find dunnage at your local hardware store and just pick it off off the floor and underneath racks and stuff and it's free. Um, that's not going to be as good quality wood. You want wood without knots in it so that the carving is easy. So The next thing you are going to need is a saw. Now I'm not talking about these huge massive things. This is unless you're like cutting a chunk off your board you don't need this. What you really need is one of these guys, these little hand saws that are, I don't know, eight inches long. These, well not eight, like six, six inches long. This is, got this for pretty cheap. You could probably find them at like Harbor Freight or even a, like Hobby Lobby maybe. Has them, I don't know. But this is used, use this to cut the shape out of your bait to cut the shape of your bait out. I said that weird. And yeah, this is just a really good saw. You might want to get some with bigger teeth on it. I don't know. If you find one of those, you definitely should get that. Because if you're cutting a harder wood, like cedar or something, uh, it's going to take you a really long time to get through with that. The next thing you are going to need is a knife. Now, you don't want to use a pocket knife for making lures because it's a lot of it's really hard with a pocket knife and you can get a really expensive fancy carving knife I have one of those but those you have to keep sharpening and it takes a lot of that takes a lot of time and it can get really frustrating over time what I recommend you getting is a box cutter knife now I don't mean don't get one of these flip out box cutters that's got all this metal stuff because this gets really uncomfortable because when you're carving you're all up in here and that is really uncomfortable to hold for multiple hours of carving. So I recommend I recommend you get a box cutter like this. Now it doesn't have to be the one that flips out. I'd rather you get one that doesn't even have this trigger. The blade's just out all the time. It's more secure that way and you can just take the blade out when you're done. The beauty about these knives is you can just pop the blade out, put a new one in. You don't have to sharpen anything. It takes two seconds to change a blade on this when you could spend hours sharpening a knife blade. So. Once you finish your carving, you need to smooth it out. And to do that, we're going to use sandpaper. Now, I have this big sandpaper kit that's got 150, 240, 320, and 400 grit. Um, if I was just buying a couple sheets of sand sandpaper, I would buy somewhere around 150 and 240 and then I'd buy 400 grit because the lower grits are going to help you take off a lot of material and then the higher grit is that finishing sand it's going to get really smooth and you can even go higher than that but you don't really need to it's whatever you want to do as far as that goes 
The next thing you're going to need if you're making baits with a lip is you're going to need some Lex and polycarbonate. This is basically just plastic that you, it's pretty unbreakable plastic that you will cut your lip out of or whatever bit you're making with this. I don't know what else you'd make with it, but it's super strong. You can buy these sheets, these small sheets. I like your local hardware store. You can buy even bigger ones, really big ones. You can buy them different thicknesses, all that. This is just my average one I get. I believe this is, it doesn't say what thickness this is, but it's just your average lip thickness on a bait. It's not super thick or thin. Super glue and a super glue accelerator. Now I'm like almost out of both of these, but you need super glue for everything in bait making. You can use it to seal your bait, you use it to glue in all the hardware, you use it to glue in the lip, you use it to glue on the eyes, you use it for everything. And this is pretty much necessary. You can't go without this. The next thing you're going to need, which connects to the super glue, is the baking soda. Um, that might sound weird. But when making lures, if when you put the weight in the belly of the bait, you need to cover it with something, and it's, you could just take epoxy, mix it up with something, and put it in there and lit and wait for half an hour. Or you can cover it in baking soda, drip some super glue on it, and it's instantly hardened. Next thing you're going to need is a good pair of dikes. Now these are kind of sticky and they're not as smooth, but they still work. You need these to cut the wire, which I don't know where my wire is. I can't find it. So you just need some thick wire. Don't buy that super wimpy stuff that you can find at like the dollar store. That's not going to work. You're going to lose, you're going to, your baits are going to break in half. You're going to lose fish. It's not going to be a good time. So make sure you get some thicker wire. Don't get heat insanely thick wire, just some medium sized wire that's not going to break. Uh, and make sure your dikes can cut through that wire. Okay, now we are moving on to some more optional things that you don't really need, but it's nice to have these things. So, First one is a hand drill. These, you can probably figure out what this is for. Drill holes in your bait for the hardware if you don't want to make a whole wire harness and use it for, and cut a slot in your bait and put it in there do all that, you can just drill a hole and shove some wire in it. Um, these are also good for making eye sockets in your baits and drilling lead holes. This is a really good thing. Uh, you can probably find this in like your dad's garage or even for cheap at like a yard sale or something. So you should get one of these, but it's not necessary. Next up on the list is a stencil. Uh, I use this stencil to make gills and to make lips with. Uh, it's just a bunch of circles. You can buy tons of these stencils. I have some for painting. I have some for carving. Um, they're just really uh, usable and they're really easy to get and they're not that much money. So you don't necessarily need these, but they are good to have if you want to get a little more advanced and make some nicer looking baits. It's a little easier with stencils. The next item on the list is a hobby knife. These are very good for carving very, very small details. I use these to carve gills a lot and just extra carvings on my baits. I'll use these sometimes if it's too small or if the material is too soft like balsa and I, a big knife keeps mashing up the wood, I'll pull out this thing with its super skinny blade and it just works great. A little, depends on where you find it, you could probably find these pretty cheap at like a yard sale or something. but. Once again, not necessary, but a good thing to have. The next thing that you don't need, but you should have, is a chisel. Now, I don't use chisels a lot. Uh, sometimes I need them if I need to carve something and I get a little bit of tear out, and I need to actually go in and fix that. Sometimes I'll use a chisel, but most of the time I just use a knife. But still nice to have this in case I need it. Uh, but yeah. Another thing that's totally optional to have is a lead pot. A lead pot's basically you put lead bricks in the pot and it heats it up and makes it a uh, liquid and you can pour it into your baits as weight. Um, those are kind of expensive and you 
you might not want to buy one of those, in which case there are some alternatives. So I used uh, press BBs, which don't work that well, and I don't recommend doing that at all. Uh, what I do recommend is buying a bunch of lead weights from a fishing shop or store for very cheap, like on Amazon or something, and just using those until you get a lead pot, because those are still have the weight of lead and they're still really cheap. Uh, you just don't have to melt them. One item that I forgot to say was uh, you need needle nose pliers at some point to help you work the wire that you are going to be using. It's just, they're just really helpful. I don't know where mine are, I can't find them. But just some, a medium sized pair of needle nose pliers will work. Fishing pliers will work, work as well, uh, go along with your dikes. Uh, some needle nose pliers come with little clippers on them to snip wire, which is great if you can find those. If you can't, just get some regular needle nose pliers and that'll do the trick. The final item I recommend you getting is a Dremel. These things are really useful for if you have, you want to put detail into your bait, but you're not very good at carving and you don't want to, you just don't want to try to carve it on there and mess up your bait, you can use a Dremel, which if you buy one, and you can get very good detail on your bait with a Dremel. It's fairly easy to learn to use. Um, and it's also got a lot of other uses in it for drilling out. You could drill out lead holes with it. You wouldn't need a drill if you just had a Dremel. You can just use the Dremel to drill out lead holes, lip sockets, lip sockets, lip slots, all of that good stuff and some of these even come with drill like drill bits I never use those because I don't think it would work out too well but they do have that so if you don't want to buy a drill you can do that as well that is probably it for this video I can't think of anything else that you might need other than a belt sander which is still optional they're pretty expensive though so I use mine a lot. Um, it is very useful. It's way nicer than carving the thing out with a knife, with a saw, and then cutting it with a knife and having to sand it all smooth. You can get a really clean shape in like no time with a belt disc sander. So I would highly recommend getting one of those, but they're not necessary. I didn't start out using one, so you don't really need to. As far as painting your baits, I would recommend getting just some, if you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on an airbrush and a compressor and paints and all that, um, I recommend you just get some different colored spray paints, a couple hand brushes, just get white spray paint, maybe some black spray paint in like one or two other colors, and then you can get some brush on paints and just brush on your details with that and then buy some clear uh, spray on enamel stuff in a spray paint can and that that's what I use for a very long time it doesn't look as nice as like a full-on UV or epoxy clear coat but it's a lot cheaper I almost forgot the last thing I would recommend you guys should get is a vise of some kind as you can tell this is not a fly tying vise I mean a legitimate big vise now, they have to be those massive vices that have huge jaws on them, but you need something substantial that you can hold your bait while you're working on it. Uh, these aren't, you can probably find these for pretty cheap, maybe at like garage sales or something. Um, but yeah, highly recommended to get a vice. It helps a lot. And that just about does it. I've, it's pretty much everything I've used, other than some things that are kind of advanced and you don't need to know about right now. Um, Stay tuned for the next installment of this series. This video was just me going over every item you need. The next videos, stay tuned for the next video. The next video is going to be probably me making a hard bait using this stuff, not using crazy power tools or any of that. Um, gonna cut out a bait with a saw, which is gonna be horrible. Um, carve it all out, sand it out, finish it just the way I told you guys that you should finish yours. And then, the video after that will probably be some soft plastic stuff. I've already got some soft plastic tutorials down in the description. I'll leave them there. 
uh, maybe throw one or two up in the cards. Um, and then after that, we'll do some making some maybe some jigs or some spinners. I'm not really advanced in those areas, so maybe that'll just be like a learning video. I'll be trying out something new, and you guys can watch me do that. But um, yeah, that's it. Got some awesome stuff coming out. My videos from my trip in Hawaii are also going to be linked somewhere. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.